they'll be on in shortly. But we're going to get started in the Sunday school hour. So we're going to bow our heads, go to the Lord in prayer, ask God's blessing uh, on the meeting. Our Father, this morning we sure are grateful and thankful for all your blessings. Thank you for our friends being here. And thank you for this dear missionary. Lord, I pray you touch him and help him. May you bless the Sunday school hour. And Father, whatever you do, we'll be careful. We'll give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Because, Lord, you're the only one worthy. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, then you can be seated this morning. We've got a missionary. And so, dear brother, come on. And uh, we're going to turn it over to him. And he's going to take a little bit, tell you about the work, and tell you about how the Lord called him into that work, and where he's going, and all those things. And uh, so, good to have you this morning, brother. Thank you, brother. All right. All right, good morning. As we say in Zimbabwe, we say good morning. But uh, that means good morning. Um, my name is Cody Rich. The, the Lord has called my family uh, and, and me to the country of Zimbabwe. I do have a wife and four children. They're not able to be here with me this morning. Um, I apologize for that. But um, so I, <clears throat> at seven years old, I've made a false profession of faith, and. Um, you know, I, I, I somehow got pushed up to the altar. I was taken in the back room and was supposed to repeat a prayer. And uh, I didn't even I didn't even pray. I didn't I didn't understand. I didn't understand. That, that's just the, the fact of the matter. Right. And uh, I, I come out to a very emotional experience. Now, people were hugging me, telling me I got saved. Not I, I know there were no ill intentions there. I think everybody thought that I got saved and that they were just happy. But. Right. Uh, for the next 11 years of my life, if I thought about eternity, if if I considered that, I went back to that moment when I was seven. Now, I could have answered your questions correct, correctly. I would have told you that I believe uh, in Jesus Christ. Right. Uh, I could have given you Bible verses on that. But um, So I, I got out of church, and uh, my, my wife, now my girlfriend then, she, <clears throat> she began to provoke me to get back into church. And so I did, I got plugged in. Uh, there had an uncle that taught me to love church. He, he, uh, he'd give me a job for the summers. And um, by, his, by his conduct, I learned that church was very important. So I got plugged in again. And I was there one night, an evangelist came through and was preaching. I don't even really remember what the man was preaching. Um, but the Lord dealt with me very specifically as I sat in that pew that what I had at seven years old wasn't the real thing. And so that was March the 1st of 2008. I, I explain it this way. I submitted myself to the righteousness of God by faith in Jesus Christ. And from that point on, the Lord, um, you know, it, it's funny. The things that I was doing pre-March the 1st, uh, sin-wise, I enjoyed. I, I had fun doing it. After that day, there, there were just certain things. Uh, for instance, um, I, had the, I had the filthiest mouth you would have, you would have known. I said one cuss word after that day, and that's just because it slipped immediately. You know, the Holy Ghost comes in and says, I don't like that. I don't like this. Right. Right. So um, that was March the 1st of 2008. Uh, I, I have a secular degree, and I began going to university in, in the fall of that same year. While I'm going to uh, driving to school in the mornings, I had about an hour drive to, to school. The Lord began to put this thing of foreign missions in my heart. Uh, now, the church that I grew up in, uh, we supported uh, a few missionaries, and it wasn't something I'd never met a missionary personally. And so, as the Lord's dealing with me, this was, this was about a four month period, the Lord, Lord was just putting this in my heart. And, um, you know, because of having my own plans and because of really not understanding uh, fully what, what all that entailed, I just kind of brushed that aside and uh, never thought about it again uh, until. Uh, 2015 when my dad passed away. Now my dad was, I could sit up here and tell you um, tell you a lot of things about my dad, but I wouldn't be standing up here today for one for him. And so my, as a little boy growing up, I, I had one goal in life, and that was to please my daddy. And uh, when he passed away in 2015, it was, it was a tough moment in my life. I didn't expect that at that point. Um, but he, he passed away. Now, I, I'll back up a little bit. My wife and I have been praying for years about switching uh, churches we were at. And I, I grew up in, my grandfather had started a church there in Middle Tennessee. I grew up in that church. Uh, I, was, I, I was, this is somewhat comical, um, considering where I was at. Um, 
I was a deacon, I was a Sunday school teacher, and I was a treasurer. And there was, there were just some things, it wasn't anything real bad uh, necessarily, but there were just some things in my conscience that I couldn't go along with. And at the same time, there, there were two, two encounters, uh, one with whom my pastor is now on the golf course, an encounter with him. Uh, my pastor, which is Ron Ralph back in Carthage, Tennessee, is the only man outside of a church setting that's ever taken the time to give me the gospel. I, I wasn't, we weren't going to Cornerstone at that point. But he come off of the hole down there, came, came down the hole down, was on to give me a track, witness to me. I was saved at the time. But uh, that, that made a lasting impression. And then there was another family that, that's in our church uh, that would minister to my wife. Uh, and for whatever this is worth, um, the, the ministry was what, what that family was wearing and, the, and, and, and their speech and their conduct. Yeah. And that ministered to my wife because that's what she wanted in our family. Yeah. Through those two things, uh, we, we prayed for years, literally. Uh, about two years about going to Cornerstone. And so when my dad passed away at just the right time, everything just kind of lined up. And uh, we left, we went there. The first night we went there, there was a man preaching named Lee Cagle. Uh, I didn't know this man from anybody. And uh, the, the Lord the Lord uh, did something special in my heart that night. As, as Brother Lee was up there preaching, uh, the, the word that comes to my mind is unction. I don't know that I ever remember uh, at that point, hearing a man preach and, and, and thinking inside, this man really believes what he's preaching. Yeah. And <clears throat> I, it, it, that night was so big in my life. I, I'm convinced had I had I went in there lost, I would come out saved. That's yeah. that. That was a very big night in my life. So we 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 never left from that point on. Uh, we got plugged in there. Uh, I got a lot of needed help as far as. Uh, from the aspect of a husband, my dad was, he, I couldn't have asked for a better dad growing up, but he wasn't the best, um, wasn't the best model as, as a husband, and so I needed help in that area. And uh, so I, I began to go through the Bible Institute when I, that, uh, when I got there at Cornerstone, and uh, I came to Genesis 12 one one night, I was going through the book of Genesis, and came to Genesis 12 one, and all those mornings driving to school in 2008, this is 2017 at this point, I had never, never thought about that, what the Lord had did in my heart as far as missions until I came to Genesis 12.1 where the Bible says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram. And it's, you, you that study the Bible, you know the Lord does this sometimes. It's like that, that word had just, it took up the entire page. Yeah. And that's all I saw. And the right. Lord took me back to those mornings driving to school. And uh, I, I told the Lord at that point uh, that I would, go, I would go wherever and I would do whatever He wanted me to do. And so obviously, at that, you know, at, at that at that vantage, at that point, I, I knew that the Lord wanted me to, to, to be involved in foreign missions, and so I started looking at the map, start, you know, mapping things out, making plans, and I really, really, really wanted to go to Brazil. Uh, that that was, um, that I just, I, I don't really know why, I just wanted to. But by fruit of a prayer meeting with two good friends of mine um, back, back at our home church, uh, the Lord initially led my my wife and I to, to South Africa, and so we we took a trip over there, visited a veteran missionary. The trip went well. We got back from that trip, and I never could get complete peace about uh, about going uh, about going back to, to South Africa, South Africa full time. Now, <clears throat> I was almost certain I was I, had, had I had to give you a percentage, I would say ninety nine percent. But for the next two years of my life, the Lord never would give me that extra percentage, and I was very, very frustrated because uh, some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. When, when you have a desire in your heart, but yet the, the door doesn't fully open, and uh, so it was, it was very frustrating. But I can look back now, and I can see exactly what the Lord was doing. Um, while I'm, I know none of you probably know who Lee Cagenhead is, but I'm just trying to paint this picture because he's, he's who we're going to, to work alongside. Uh, while I'm in South Africa, uh, I find out that he's coming up, Brother Lee Cagenhead is coming up to be on staff at Cornerstone. Uh, he had pastored a church in South Alabama, I think, for 13 to 15 years. I can't remember the exact amount. Uh, so he, he comes up to be on staff. He and I end up on the same street providentially. It's, you know, it's not something that we planned out. He had, he, had, um, he had made a request to the Lord sometime before that that maybe he and I could um, gain a relationship. There's a story behind all that. But 
nonetheless we end up on the same street uh, for about uh, for about a year and a half he and i spend uh, almost every morning together we would get up we would run we would get finished we would pray and we already we had africa in common he had made many trips to, to, to zimbabwe at that point and obviously i was praying about south africa and so um i was i was very very um that there was a point in my life when i was uh, and i felt like the lord wanted me to go back take a survey trip uh look look for uh, housing and pricing and things like that and i'm trying to get peace about that brother ron brother ron was gone one uh, wednesday night brother lee preached on uh out of james chapter one if any man lack wisdom let him, let him ask god and i said well you know lord i'm, I'm sitting here fretting on about what to do i said lord i I, this is my prayer. I, I need I need your wisdom, Lord. What what do you want me to do? Uh, so my wife's vehicle had a problem. I was driving to Nashville to the junkyard to get a piece. I had Alexander Scorby playing. It came to Exodus chapter three, where the Lord tells uh, Moses to go back to the elders of Israel. And so you know, I had just prayed that you know a, a day or two before that. So that caught my attention. I get to church on Sunday. Brother Ron's back. His Sunday school lesson is from Matthew twenty eight. He gave three words, and the first word was go. And uh, so I, I began to, to plan very seriously about going back. At the same time, Brother Lee is planning a trip into Zimbabwe to visit uh, Jeff Porter, who's a better, better missionary there. Um, so he approaches me and he says, hey, why don't, you, uh, why don't you just come along with me to Zimbabwe? He said, you can meet Brother Jeff. So he, uh, he said uh, he's been in, he was in South Africa for over 20 years. He said he would be a good contact for you to meet. And then so we can go to Zimbabwe, head down to South Africa, and we can accomplish both things at once. Uh, originally, that trip was planned for the middle of 2020. I wasn't in the planning stages of that, but somehow the trip got pushed up. Obviously, had it been in the middle of the year, we wouldn't have got to take the trip. Um, but but the, the trip got pushed up to the first of uh, 2020. We take the trip over there. I'm on the plane ride over there, and. Um, I'm in my normal Bible reading, and so I started that after I got saved very shortly when I was 18. And so this is 11 years worth of Bible reading that has ordered me to um, to Nehemiah chapter six on, on this plane right over. So I get I get in Nehemiah six, and I, listen, I read through my Bible regularly. I, I I make that a point, but if but if the Lord's speaking to me, I, I'll I'll sit down yeah. for a little bit. And uh, that, that's what happened on that day, on that plane ride over. We were stopping up in Germany uh, to, to get to Zimbabwe. And so the Lord stuck me there. I don't have my wide margin Bible with me. I would uh, show you the notes that I've made. The, the page is full of notes. And uh, so we, we get off the plane ride. Uh, Brother Jeff Porter picks us up there in the capital. And uh, he takes us to his, to his residence in a place called Chapingi, Zimbabwe. Uh, and if any of you ever ever been to Africa, it's uh, the, the potholes will swallow uh, cars. Uh, they're, they're very big, and so I'm sitting on the back of Brother Jeff's tailgate. You can't drive that that fast when um, when you're on certain parts of the road like that. And so we're very close to his place. The dust is blowing up. It's hot. Um, and the dust over there has a distinct smell, and it doesn't smell good at all. And so at this point in my life, I have. Um, I have no intention of going to Zimbabwe. So I'm sitting on the back of that tailgate, and I tell the Lord that. I say, Lord, I'm glad I'm not coming here. And so, you know, you got to be careful what you say. The Lord has a sense of humor. Uh, and so, Brother Jeff, we get to his house. I sat down that night to make sense out of what I put on, in my Bible and put it on paper, and nothing made sense. It's like someone had locked my brain down. Uh, so I tell the Lord, you know, Lord, it... I don't understand this. That makes complete sense on the plane. I can't make sense out of it, out of that now. Uh, so I, <clears throat> I'm laying there that morning, early the next morning, and uh, I can't sleep. The, the mosquitoes are buzzing around my ears. I'm trying to sleep under a towel. It's hot, and uh, I just begin to pray. And you know, um, some some well, I say sometimes. The, the, you know, the Lord knows our thoughts. He knows our heart. Yeah, right. and sometimes we try to deceive Him. I've had, to, I've had to catch myself in my prayers before and just stop because I'm, I'm lying to the Lord. I'm trying to pull one over on right. And I just tell the Lord, I say, Lord, um, I feel like right now in my life that, that, that you want me to go to South Africa. I said, I said Lord, I, but there's some hesitation, and you know that. And I said, Lord, if I, I'm here in Zimbabwe. I said, if you want me to have a part in Zimbabwe, I said, Lord, just show me I'm willing. 
And uh, I get up the next morning. I come to Nehemiah chapter 7, verse 1. Uh, keep in mind, I'm staying with Jeff and Cindy Porter. Uh, I'm 8,000 miles away from home. I I have any intention of coming to Zimbabwe. I'm just along for the trip to get to South Africa. There's 11 years worth of Bible reading that has ordered me to Nehemiah chapter 7. The Lord stuck me in Nehemiah 6 on the plane to get me in Nehemiah 7 at this point after I've said this prayer. And I come to Nehemiah 7, 1, the Bible says, Now it came to pass uh, when the wall was finished, and I, when the wall was uh, built, and I set up the doors and the porters. And so obviously, I'm staying with Jeff and Cindy Porter. The word porters, I don't know, from the Bible, a little more than <laughs> And so it catches my attention. You're not going to find Zimbabwe in the Bible. The closest you'll get is um, uh, Ethiopia. So I, I'm pondering this in my heart. I don't want to go to see on that, although it's not a coincidence. Um, Brother Jeff takes me on a bike ride through the bush, and uh, he's going to have me preach in one of the churches that he had started up there. And um, he, he takes a Sunday school lesson. He, he's he's going to give me the preaching service. And his lesson is from Genesis 12, 11, which is the verse that God had used uh, in my heart years before that. And so that, that was that was two uh, really, really big things that were not a coincidence right after I just asked the Lord to show me if he wanted me to have a part in Zimbabwe. <clears throat> so it was a real surreal moment in my life. I'm sitting on this little, you know, bench with um, just a just a branch in this in this church in this church in Mount Salinda, Zimbabwe, and I understand that the Lord has did this. Now it was a, it was a little bit conflicting because I'm on a trip to, to South Africa. Uh, to, uh, for a survey trip and so I understand at this point that this is what the Lord uh, the Lord has did this at the same time we go through a place called Mutari which is uh, where my family and I moved for three months last year <clears throat> and where the Cadenhead family is now currently when we went through that city uh, I could tell something changed with Brother Lee's countenance and he, his, his words to me were he said brother if I did not have my marching orders he said I'd be moving my family here and he began to pray at that point uh, that I would go there. Now, he never told me that. He has a podcast called Great Commission Conversation. And I find out on that podcast that he began to pray that I would go there. He, he never told me that. So we, we get back from that trip. COVID happened. And while we were over there, uh, China was kind of shutting everything down. We were able to get home. We got home. Uh, and I just, you know, I had time. I, and nobody knew what, what was going on at that point in history. And so... Um, I just began to pray that God would raise up a family out of Cornerstone to go labor with us. Now, it wasn't a bargain with God. I didn't say, Lord, I'm not going to go unless you do this. It was just a simple request. And the Lord answered that prayer through Brother Lee and his family. And uh, so that was three really, really big things that, that the Lord did. To um, So it started in South Africa, and really the Lord kind of honed it in on Zimbabwe. And so... Um, it was the opportunity was presented to my family that uh, that when Brother Lee and his family went to deploy full time that we could go over with them for three months. So we took that opportunity. I quit my job last February or, or the February uh, of last, not this past February, but the one in 2022. I quit my job. We went over with them. Now, look, if you ever get the opportunity to take, take a short term mission trip, you should do it. I'm a product of that. I'm studying up here right now because I took short term mission trips. But at the same time, um, the, the trip to Zimbabwe is 36 hours. And so by the time you get over there and two weeks has elapsed, you're, you're just getting adjusted physically, and then you're on your way back home. Uh, and so the, the three-month stint, yeah, there was a lot of benefits to that. In, in that, we got to get involved in ministering. We got to build relationships with people. I got to see people get saved. Got to disciple them. I have contact with, I had a text this morning, I have contact with these guys on a daily basis. And so we're, we're looking forward to getting back to, uh, to that. We're looking forward to getting back to those relationships. And so the Lord did prosper our trip while we were over there. It was, it was somewhat of an inconvenience uh, in the short, but, but, it, but it has paid off because uh, it's, we, we learned a lot of things that have helped us on this end of planning to get back. And so uh, we got back at, uh, at the 1st of July of last year, in essence, and uh, we started deputation immediately. And so we're right out a year into it. We're at 83% on our support. And uh, here's, here, here's, here's what's happened uh, of recent. 
uh, Wednesday of this of this week, uh, this past week now, um, our paperwork was submitted for our visa, and normally it takes about two two to three weeks. It's pretty standard business uh, on on the, on the visa that we're getting or willing, but it it is Africa, and so um, whatever standard is, it, it's not there, and so. Uh, we would appreciate your prayers there. We should hear something back in two to three weeks. Upon hearing back for that, we're going to purchase our tickets for September the 28th. Um, and so we, we we need about 12 churches to, to make up the rest of our support. So we're, we're trusting the Lord to, to do that for us. Uh, the, the, big, the big matter of prayer right now is um, the approval of that visa. Uh, and so we would appreciate your prayers there. Um, We've got a lot of stuff to do. We're shipping a container of scripture and personal goods. Um, that has been a been a very very uh, large portion of my workload in the past, you know, two three months. Uh, two three months. And so uh, we would appreciate your prayers there. We're we're shipping that over with upon the approval of this uh, uh, visa. We have we get two exemptions. We get we get an exemption on personal goods and we get an exemption on the vehicle. The funds are there for, for both of those. The, those have been provided. We, we don't have any need there, but what we do need is prayer that uh, because these uh, these exemptions are time sensitive. We only get three months to get to get this in from the time we get our passport stamped. So we would appreciate your prayers there as well. Um, so what what's going on in Zimbabwe is nothing novel. Um, the majority of the population in Zimbabwe is in the rural areas, and so. We will be living in the city, but the, the majority of the population it, it makes like a circle around the city. So they call these places high density areas. This is where most of all the people congregate to. They say that the unemployment rate in Zimbabwe is 90%. It's probably more than that. And so, you know, naturally, you just have to move to what you can afford, right? And that's, that's what these people do. And so we started Bible studies in these outlying areas. There were six of these in particular. That was started originally. I had the privilege of starting one of these. And so what we do is we just go in and we pour biblical doctrine into these people. Uh, we're, we're not interested in exporting American Christianity. It's trash. I'm not interested in being an American Christian. Right. Yeah. We're not interested in making them Zimbabwean Christians. Their heritage of Christianity, it's trash. Yeah. Uh, we want them to get a hold of the Bible. Right. And when you look at, uh, when you look at our heritage, um, you... The, the, the influence of the Bible is undeniable. It's there. Um, the Zimbabweans don't have that. So that, that is our desire for them. And so um, one of these Bible studies has developed into a church. And this, this, this is our long-term long goal. Uh, and so Cornerstone Bible Baptist Church, they met, um, they organized about two, two months ago. And so uh, that, is, that is our prayer and our hope for, for these Bible studies that have been planted because... Um, as I said, much of the population is in the rural areas in Zimbabwe, and so what happens is uh, these people don't have vehicles. Uh, some people walk two and three hours to get to church uh, uh, on, on Sunday mornings, and so um, we want to we want we want to plant these Bible studies in, in hopes that they'll become churches for these people out in the rural areas, much much like the way the missionary Baptists did in America. You know, 100, 150 years ago, though it's um, it's uh, it's been distorted, but that's kind of the model. And uh, long term uh, plan would be that the church there in Matari to be a beachhead that the trained men to send out, much like Paul did in the in the school of Tyrannus. He set up for two years, and the Bible says that all of Asia was evangelized from those efforts. And so that's that's our long term goal. And then obviously, um, the goal is to, is to work ourselves out of a job and, and to move on. And so that's, uh, that's, that's what the Lord is, is doing in Zimbabwe. We're very excited about getting back. As I said, upon, upon the approval of our work permit, uh, we will purchase our tickets for September the 28th. And so we would appreciate your prayers in these matters. Um, if you all have any questions, please see me after the service. Be glad to uh, try to answer whatever questions you may have about Zimbabwe, about my family, about our ministry. And uh, but so we're we're excited about getting over there. We we know without a shadow of a doubt that this is what the Lord wants us to do, and uh, <clears throat> we're excited about that. We're excited about how the Lord's led us there, 
and not getting back over to the work there that's going on. There's so Brother Lee and his family are over there, and there's a, there's a thriving work. We're we're excited about getting back over there. So once we get there, uh, our first really first order of business is to really get set up. We I think we have a rent house already, prospects of that, and so. Um, We'll get over, we'll get set up. Uh, I'm already working on the language. Uh, I've, I've been working on that loosely for about a year, about the past two months, really, really heavily. And so that, and we'll immediately get involved in these, in, in, in these Bible studies that are going on and uh, ministry in the rural area. And so what happens is these men, they migrate to the city because they're trying to find whatever work they can. And uh, so, so they come to the city, they leave their rural home. And when we say rural, we're not talking about like, you know, a, a 20 minute drive. We're talking about two, three, four hours outside of somewhere, outside of the city. And so they, they, they come there for work. But once they get saved, right, they, they have a burden to go back and tell their people. And so um, part of our ministry will be once we get back there is to, is to assist those men uh, in, in these matters. And so... Uh, uh, thank you, church, for having us in. We uh, we really appreciate it, and I appreciate your testimony. Uh, I've I, I've heard from uh, from from more than one about Landmark Baptist Church. I actually met uh, the Halls a couple weeks ago. Uh, met them at a, at a missions conference, and uh, they they just uh, raved about you guys. And so, uh, thank you for being a blessing to us, having us in, and uh, we sure appreciate you. Amen. Amen. You enjoyed that saying that. <clears throat> Someone said this, a coincidence is when God chooses to remain silent. Yeah. yeah. Right. There are no coincidences right. in the Christian life. If you believe God's sovereign, and we do, we believe He rules and reigns over everything. Yeah. And uh, that includes the affairs of men, His yeah. men. Yeah. And uh, so I appreciate what He had to say. And uh, I will say this I know your pastor. And uh, preached with him in Kentucky several years ago. Know several fellows out of Cornerstone, um, Brother Travis Alltop, Brother Jim Bretton, some of those guys. And I'm with them every year at a meeting in Texas. And uh, it's a phenomenal church, and uh, with a phenomenal pastor. Amen. And uh, it was the first night of meeting. First night of meeting, and Brother Ron got up and preached on love. And I thought, well, this would be encouraging. And then he cut me to shreds. <laughs> he said, what'd you do, get mad and leave? No, I crawled my sorry carcass up on an altar yeah. and got right. Yeah. That's what preaching's supposed to do. Sure. Yeah. I say this all the time. You might preach me to the altar, but you ain't preaching me out the door. Right. And uh, it sure was a help. It stirred my heart. So I, I appreciate that church and their, their testimony. <clears throat> and uh, so, uh, brother, we want to help you. We want to take you on and help you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so you pray for him. I do have a couple of questions. What's the uh, cost of living in Zimbabwe? It's very expensive because of um, not being as much access. I think gas is almost $8 a gallon. Mm -hmm. um, when we go to rent a house, it's $700 to $1,000 easily. Groceries are they're very comparable. And uh, clothes for, uh, for kids are very expensive. So we're we're trying to plan for that right now to save money long term. So the cost of living is, it's going to cost us more to live there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and uh, I appreciate a man that's willing to sacrifice his life yeah. to reach somebody else. Amen. That is the essence of Christianity. Yeah. Is we belong to him. We're bought and paid for. We belong to him. It is our responsibility to find the will of God and do it. And in doing it, bring glory to the one that saved us. Amen. That's our responsibility, man. That's Christianity in a nutshell. And uh, so until you get out, listen, God only had one son. He made him a missionary. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, tonight, as long as you all you care about you, you'll never be where God wants you to be. Yeah. Uh, listen, uh, it is impossible to be a good Christian and be selfish. That's impossible. Amen. And uh, God has that designed that thing that our, our whole essence to glorify Him is our sacrifice uh, of self for others. And uh, so uh, we appreciate that. And if you go around, shake His hand, talk to Him. If you have any questions, I'm sure they'll be glad to answer them and pray for Him. And I'm sure you've got prayer cards with you, don't you? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, get a prayer card, stick it on your refrigerator. Uh, and you can look at me, and every time I go to the refrigerator, I'll pray for Him. 
he'll get frightful quite bad. And, uh, I'm just saying. And uh, so, uh, but I sure enjoyed that. Thank you so much for coming. We sure appreciate him. Also, this one, good to have Brother Kevin Mathis and his dear wife Amen. with us. We're looking forward to hearing him preach in just a little while. You pray for him. And uh, while we take a quick break, come around and shake our visitors' hands. Uh, make sure uh, that you uh, let, uh, that you welcome them and uh, pray for the service this morning. All right? All right. Let, we'll, let's all stand. We'll be dismissed. Father, we love you. Thank you for the testimony that we've heard. Thank you for our this dear brother. Lord, our prayer is you keep your hand over and protect him as he travels uh, and finishes up deputation. Father, pray you bless the ministry that you've given him. God, I pray you give him uh, fruit uh, for his labor. Lord, I pray you'd smooth the way, make things easy for him to get to the foreign field. And Lord, once there, I pray you'd anoint him, use him, bless him, uh, Lord, and uh, bless the work that you've given him to do. Father, we pray you'd bless the worship hour. Father, we pray you'd bless uh, the crowd, the fellowship, the offering, the singing, the preaching, everything that goes on. May it glorify you, uplift you, honor you uh, above all. And Lord, whatever you do for us, we'll be careful. We'll thank you. We'll praise you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen.